Natasha Clark joins me first, LBC's political editor. I mean, there were, there were real high points in that speech, uh, Natasha. A couple of low points as well, though, eh? Hi, Sheila. Yes, there were. I mean, a rock star reception for Keir Starmer. Obviously, he was talking about it being the most well-attended Labour conference ever. Um, you know, absolute huge applause at the end of that speech, like you'd expect. Um, really, uh, what stood out for me, the roar when they played the exit poll. Everybody overjoyed to hear that. Um, members, uh, MPs, jubilant relief. Obviously, you saw Keir Starmer and his wife, Victoria, um, on the stage there, grinning from ear to ear, shrugging off the last few days of those media headlines about donations, dresses, parties. Just one major slip up, I thought, when he said the word sausages rather than hostages. Yeah. Uh, quickly corrected, uh, we should say. Um, and nearly the entire speech without a protester, although it does seem to be a regular feature of party conferences these days that one almost always gets into the room and slips up there, doesn't it? And yeah, he almost made it to the end of the speech as well without getting in the end. Um, I believe they were uh, protesting about yes. uh, the party's position on Gaza, That's which right. is not uh, unexpected. No at all. Um, Three themes I think stood out to me from this speech, uh, Sheila. Build a Britain which works for you. That's going to be a a really big theme, I think, from Keir Starmer in the coming days, weeks and possibly years. Um, It was all about showing what he wants to do, that vision that MPs have been really crying out for for the last 11 weeks about what kind of Prime Minister he's going to be and his plan to get there. And of course, it started off gloomy. The Tories have left us a terrible legacy, he says, but he wants to leave a better future for our kids uh, again. And like you say, more savage attacks on the Tories, talking about a government ser- of service and how, what he wants to bring that back. But we, he, got a, he gave us a real glimpse, I thought, of the country that we can be if we can fix some of those issues. Now, will that hope be enough for members, for MPs, for people here today? Let's see how this speech uh, lands. The second thing I thought, you know, politics all about hard choices and we all have to make them. He wants this to be a reforming government. He wants more state intervention. That's the sort of takeaway that I had from this. But that means there are going to be trade offs to come. That includes more control from the government. Um, he said it's going to be very, very hard to do that. The society, societal black hole that he talked about, the NHS in tatters, uh, trust in politics, of course, on the floor. But some of those trade-offs I thought really interesting, Sheila. We need new prisons if we want to lock criminals up. If we want cheaper bills, we have to build pylons. Support for the welfare state means a clampdown on the benefits bill. So it's going to be tough and there are no easy answers. It, it reminded me a little bit of, of the sort of try uh, the message that Rishi Sunak in a way tried to, to speak about before and there were lots of things from the Conservative actually which did not go down hugely well in the, the hall I might say when he said we're all in it together the idea of a, a Labour Prime Minister quoting George Osborne um, a man you know who overseeing uh, Tory austerity. Was he trying to be funny when he did that I couldn't tell. <laughs> no I don't think so and it did not go there was a bit of an ooh in the room at the, yeah. uh, the idea of that that didn't go down hugely uh, well a bit of a chill came over that but yeah all in it together is very much the theme of what he wants to do going into this budget. There's no return to Tory austerity, he said, but that, that, that didn't go down so well, I And it's, think. it's such an interesting speech, or the, you know, the format of, of, of any leader's speech in that situation is he is, of course, speaking to the party. He's speaking to people like you and me. He's speaking to people at home who are listening. There's, there's lots of layers to this audience, aren't there? How much of it do you think was him saying to his party, perhaps especially the parliamentary party, stick with me, support me, I mean, he even alluded to it, didn't he? We, we'll get this done sooner if you do. Did you get a sense that that's what part of that speech was very much about? Yeah, completely. You know, change has begun and this is what it's going to look like. Uh, Stay with me. Be patient. I did this before. I changed my party. I can do it again. He's only been in office for 11 weeks and already we had a Gordon Brown style list of all the things that he'd achieved. Last heard, of course, at the party's conference in 2009 uh, before the election uh, was called. Um, But yeah, reform is coming. Um, Bear with me. Fights are coming, but I am going to deliver that change. And And politicians... uh, Sorry, if I can just say on that list, I thought that too when he made that list, that it was quite Brown-esque, wasn't it? He was saying, we've begun already. Uh, And this is the list he gave. Politics as service was underpinning all of it. Um, uh, uh, Solar and wind power, doctors back in operating theatres, the end of Ofsted single word judgments, renters reform bill up and running, railways are going to be coming back into public ownership. That got a huge round of applause, didn't it? 
It did, and yeah, you know, not a bad start, I'd say. Um, and obviously, you know, the, the, the mood in the room, and like you say, it is a, a speech of many layers. It's not just to MPs, it's it's to the members in the hall, but genuinely, it's to the wider public. That's who this main conference message is aimed at, and they're obviously not watching in the room, they're watching in clips on, uh, you know, LBC and uh, other other broadcast media is yeah, available. just LBC. Um, <laughs> but politicians say this all the time, don't they? They all say they want to change the country. They all run up against opposition, whether it's their own MPs, the civil service, um, but he is determined to, to get on with it and trying to say, look, be patient, that is all uh, coming. And there were a few little news announcements for us in there as well, Sheila. Um, you mentioned the location of Great British Energy. It's going to be in Aberdeen. Aberdeen. We, we got, obviously, the announcement of the Hillsborough Law, which we, you know, long trailed. He promised that two years ago at the party's conference here in Liverpool. And finally, he's going to deliver on it by April. Uh, that's going to be brought to Parliament. And the threat of criminal sanctions as well. That is uh, really goes back to the theme that you were talking about earlier, about a government of service that ran all the way through that speech. So the threat of criminal sanctions for M for ministers, uh, for public servants who could uh, potentially make mistakes, and they are going to, to have that threat hanging over them, and you know to, to you know mean that there's never going to be another Grenfell again or another public uh, you know infected blood inquiry uh, saga again. So a lot of that. Um, also, homes for heroes. That's uh, a, a, another announcement that we got Huge from the prime minister. To that, wasn't there in the yeah, hall, that yeah. was really well received for veterans, for those fleeing domestic abuse, for care leavers. They will all get priority access to housing. Um, but of course, you know, he had to address some of that discomfort, I think, that we heard in the room, you know, from the unions, from MPs. Um, he, he did mention the winter fuel payments as well. He said, it's going to be unpopular. I am going to make unpopular decisions. And it's, it's really interesting, the shift in tone from a prime minister that is going to stand up in front of a conference hall. And he clearly feels confident about doing so. Some of these arguments, I think, you know, there are going to be people, especially conservatives, um, some in his own party, that are going to be really, really fearful about some of these announcements. A lot of nanny state changes. That's kind of the theme I got. And that's going to be really, really tough to push through. But he is prepared to be Mr. Unpopular to make those decisions. Like he said, the short term pain for the long term gain. And just to word on what he said about the riots. He alluded to them uh, at two phases in the speech, didn't he? I thought the second example of it, he really got stuck in and said, I think he didn't name people, but he was basically saying, if you want to agitate for the far right, go right ahead. I'm ready for you. I mean, he was really tough on that, I thought. He was. A really strong message there. He called them violent thugs. He referred to some of them as racist. Um, really, really strong, powerful language from the Prime Minister, echoing what we heard from earlier Yvette in the day Cooper, from yeah. Yvette Cooper. Um, but then he went on to talk about how it, there are people in the country with legitimate concerns concerns about immigration, we shouldn't confuse those two people and it's not the same thing. Um, and really interesting language on, on migration as well, Sheila, talking about taking back control. That's the vote leave playbook. Haven't uh, heard a, a Labour Prime Minister talk about that like that. Um, taking back control, he said, is a Labour policy um, and we should embrace that control because control on migration, remember when Ed Miliband put that on the side of a mug, didn't go down too well with his party then, but now he's embracing that again. So lots of different themes coming from both uh, you know, Labour uh, parties past and present. President, but, uh, president, but also uh, from, from the Conservatives. And, and that is going to be pretty controversial for some MPs, uh, not least people like John McDonnell, who earlier today was talking about how he feared exactly this, a sort of Osborneite uh, element to some of what Keir Starmer is saying. And many people on the left, um, Keir Starmer had a really strong message to them saying, you know, I'm essentially going to stare you down, I'm going to face you down, this is what I believe in, this is what the country uh, is crying out for, that change, and I'm going to get on and deliver it. And he is not afraid with such a huge majority, with so many MPs in Parliament. He obviously has the power and was, he feels the confidence to do it. Was Just briefly, was he referring to people like Don McDonnell when he talked about, quite early on in the speech, when he talked about bad faith advice from people who want the politics of noisy performance? Did Absolutely. Think? Yeah. yeah. You know, Jeremy Corbyn. And, you know, you heard that when he mentioned the, pro uh, the protester that, that came into the speech. He was talking about how, you know, they must have had a, a ticket to the 2019 2019. That conference. was rehearsed. That, that was ready oh, in his back pocket. He was so yeah. ready. But, yeah. you know, he delivered it quite well. He did, he I think did. it came across, you know, okay. quite amusingly in the room but yes a really interesting speech and a few hints as well I thought about the budget obviously that's the next thing that we're all thinking about I think he is telling us that taxes are, are going to go up he, you know talked about the the risk of low taxes the risk of a Liz Trust government two years ago um, I think that he is trying to hint that that is where he's going to go uh, and he is going to have to obviously plug not just the society of black hole but as he keeps on talking about that 22 billion pound black hole in the public finances too thanks a lot Natasha Natasha Clark LBC's political editor speaking to us there at the conference centre in Liverpool or the centre where the conference is taking place in Liverpool.